Hey what's up and how's it going? This is Toby and in today's video I'll be showing you guys how to create this awesome 3D face slash head filter using Lens Studio for Snapchat and not only does it sit on my head and move with me it actually does have a little intro animation just sliding down sitting very gently on my head. So then let's get started by creating a new Lens Studio project. And if you need some more advice on how to download Lens Studio and how to actually create a new project, then I highly advise to take a look at my last video where I very much step-by-step -step explained everything. I'll link it somewhere. All right, so to get started, we're here in Lens Studio 5.4. And what we'll then need to do is click on this plus sign here and add a face mesh, which will also automatically add a head binding. So basically, this is our face tracking effect. And if we'll now go into the preview, we can see, well, this looks very scary, but we can actually see that a mesh has been applied to the face and we could do anything with that right now. One thing we want to do at first is we want to get kind of rid of this uh, gray material. It really freaks me out. And for that, we want to use an occluder. So we don't, don't have an occluder yet in our asset uh, browser. Let's see if we can add one here. Click on the plus, add uh, type occluder. Just click on occluder here. And so this is basically an invisible material, which will also at the same time block everything that's behind it. Um, so we won't see any 3D objects. If we, let's say, put on a hat, we won't see the backside of the hat because it's going to be occluded. But we also won't have this weird uh, gray uh, metallic look here. So let's simply select the face mesh and drag the occluder onto the material and in this way we don't have actually anything that we see anymore. And now it is actually time to add our head and for that we can simply download any 3D model that we want and I'm going to go to Sketchfab for that. So now we're here in Sketchfab and can search for any 3D model and I'm going to simply search for head and I'm going to say downloadable and here we already have the head that I've been using for this video already so we can just click on it and simply download the 3D model then we want to select GLB it is 3 megabytes this is very important as our effect is only allowed to have 8 megabytes in total so we need to be very careful with that click on download and then back in Lens Studio we can simply go to our downloads and drag the head into our asset browser all right, so once it has been loaded, let's do a right click on it and click on unpack. And now we should have a folder here that says hat. We can click on it, take a look on it. And we can already see here in the preview on the right bottom corner that something is wrong with the materials. This is something that can happen if we uh, import something into Lens Studio. So let's quickly fix that. And I've actually already tested this out and it's somewhere within the materials here. So if we take a look, the glass material has this pinkish um, edge here or this pinkish uh, triangles here, which mean, usually means that something is wrong with the texture or something hasn't been interpreted quite right. And, and here, I guess it will be the transmission as there is no texture for that. And for that sake, we'll simply turn it off. So pink usually always means that something is missing, some kind of texture couldn't be imported or simply missing from the object or could also be a shader problem. All right, so now we do have our head and what we can simply do is we can select the face mesh and then simply drag our head under the mesh like this. All right, so this is pretty big. So let's uh, very much reduce the scale to something like 3.5 or so. And then we'll go into our scene view and then adjust the head accordingly. So let's quickly select a move, uh, move it upwards so that it fits well onto the face. We can actually open up the preview like this so we can see it at the same time. Um, yeah, like that. And so we can move the head. I think this is not too bad. Maybe move it a bit further backwards. Oops. I don't know, we're moving only the head and not the bottles on there. So let's grab the whole object here. Um, let's move the inspector downwards somewhere. Like this. And like this. Perfect. So now we can adjust everything. Uh, hit R or E to do scale and rotation or also use here those icons to scale it down um a bit more 
Yep, and that is not looking too bad. I guess we'll need to test it out uh, with our camera anyways later on. But I think for now this is not too bad. Um, just one more addition here in the face mesh. You can see that the eyes are um, still, well, they are kind of open here, right? So which means that we could potentially see through the eyes. But if now our uh, character or person here would move upwards the head, so would look upwards, then this would mean that we could again through the eyes see the backside of the head. And if we don't want this to happen, we can actually go ahead in the face mesh and create a new 3D objects, maybe call this one capsule. And simply drag it upwards, move it somewhere behind the eyes. Then we can go ahead and rotate it. Like this. And then we'll also add simply the occluded material. So let's go ahead and search for the occluder. And let's drag it on here. And so now we don't have these uh, basically transparent eye section anymore. Great. So now let's actually test how this looks within our camera. Let's again drag the preview over here and select the webcam. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's kind of cutting off here by the ear, right? But um, this is something that we could still fine tune. But I guess for our very first um, try, this is doing pretty well. So next up, what we want to do is we want to create this intro animation. So it somehow flies in, has a cool intro animation. For that, we are going to actually go ahead and create a new JavaScript. So simply click on the plus here, enter a JavaScript file. Let's call this head animation. So let's open this one up. Um, I'm going to open this one up in Visual Studio Code. Uh, there's actually, when you use TypeScript, I think, there is a code completion extension that you can download in Visual Studio Code. I don't know if it will work on JavaScript as well, but this will make it a lot easier than working in the built-in editor. So if you need to manually choose the editor you want to use because it doesn't work right away, like with mine, you can open in Finder because I usually use uh, WebStorm. But for that, I want to use Visual Studio Code and then simply open with uh, and use the Visual Studio Code. So then let's trust. So let's go ahead and define a few input fields that we can later on fill in the editor. So first of all, let's create an input for the scene object, which is going to be our head. And uh, next up, let's create a input for the delay that we want to happen. Uh, so basically, we don't want to start our animation right away, but we want to have a little delay so you can actually see what's happening. And let's put that to one second for the beginning. We can also play around with that later on. Then next up, let's define the flight duration of our head object. Um, so let's set this one to one and we can still test it later on. And then finally, let's create a vector three and we want to call this one fly from offset. So basically how high we want to offset the head above uh, our character. And from this position, it will then begin to fly down. So then let's create some variables where we're actually going to store the um, values that we set here. So first of all, let's store the head um, and gonna from our script inputs gonna take the hat then we also want to store the delay which is going also to be the delay and so it's just easier to work with that because otherwise we could also actually work with always saying script dot head script dot oops it's not script dot script but script dot delay um, like that in our actual functions but it's just a lot less typing if we basically transfer our variables here into actual so our script variables which are the inputs into actual variables in the in the beginning i found using uh, lens studio so then the flight duration is going to be the flight duration and then finally the fly from offset is going to be the fly from offset. So then let's first of all check whether there is actually a head object signed in the script variables up here. So if not, then we're simply going to print no head scene object assigned. 
like this and uh, we just want to return because otherwise we're just getting error messages and we don't want that so then next up let's get the head transform so we can actually apply some kind of location or scale to it so let's go and have the transform and this one will be the head.get transform that we'll then call and then we're also going to get the original position of that so this is going to be the head transform and the get local position so this is going to be basically our position on the head um, that we have in the very beginning so then let's next up define the starting position so this is going to be basically our original position and we want to add uh, to that the fly from offset which could be something like uh, 5 on the y-axis or 10 on the y-axis so we'll actually position it somewhere above the head so then let's go ahead and actually set our head transform local position like that to our start position then we want to create a new event which we're going to call a uh, delayed event so we don't want to start at the very beginning but maybe a second after that or so and we want to create a new event which we'll call delayed callback event and then when this event is being called we want to bind a new function that we'll uh, create in a minute call in this one start fly in and finally, we want to reset the delay event. So what this does is basically helping to delay our function that we'll write in a second by one second or whatever number we're going to choose in the end. So then let's create a new function, which we're going to call start fly in. And let's create a new variable, which we're going to call elapsed. So set this one oops set this one to zero and then we're going to define the update event which is going to be script create event so this is pretty much like the update event that maybe you could already know when you are a unity developer and then we're going to bind something to the update event which is going to be another function basically a function in a function uh, taking the event data and we want to go ahead and first of all then add to elapsed the event data dot get delta time so this is basically helping us to do then a smooth animation so this um, event function that we created here is basically called anytime the frame is updated, which could be 30 times per second, 20 times per second, 60 times per second, depending on your phone's processor. And so we kind of even that out by getting the time dot, uh, so the uh, time delta time, and then feeding this into our animation that we are going to create right now. So next up, let's create a new variable that we want to call t. And this is going to help us to basically do a linear interpolation between the start and the end position. So we're, what we basically want to do here is we want to uh, divide our elapsed time uh, by the flight duration so that we can make sure that when actually the flight duration has been reached, the object is uh, actually at its final position. And what we want to say here is so is if t is bigger or equal to 1.0 which is basically then means that we should have reached our final goal we want to again set it to 1.0 because we do not want to go basically further than we intended to and we are simply going to disable our update event so update event dot enabled is going to be false so that we then don't call this function anymore and then we're going to create a new position. And this is going to be a vector3.lerp. So we want to do a linear interpolation in between the start position and the original position. And we want to feed in t, which is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1, depending on basically how far we are. 
And then finally, we want to go ahead and go into the head transform and we want to set the local position to the new position. So we got a very simple movement here. All right. So then let's go ahead and go back into Lens Studio and we simply can drag our head animation into the scene and it will create a new empty object. Let's also drag in our inspector here at the top. And now the only thing we need to do is actually drag in our head, set the delay and set the fly from offset to something like 20 or so. Oh, and there's one thing we actually misspelled and it is a delayed callback event, not delay callback event. So these are actually specific events that are being called in specific situations. Like for example, if you're unity dev, you know, the start function on enable, on destroy, update and so on. And this delayed callback event also belongs to these special kind of functions. And finally, let's also make sure to actually set a float up here because we forgot to put in the data type. And now if we go ahead and actually refresh the effect, we can see that it is working and we could potentially even increase the offset here to 30. So you won't see it in the beginning, but then we'll come down and gently sit on top of your head. All right. And now if you would want to publish this, you could simply click the publish button, then fill out all these uh, fields here and then send it to Snapchat. Or you can also go ahead and preview your lens by pairing your Snapchat account and then seeing it within the app. If you want to know more about it, again, there's this tutorial that I already made, which will explain this in more detail. But I think for this tutorial, for this quick tutorial, this is already it. So if you have any further questions, feel free to write a comment below. But until then, as always, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.